Derek, do you ever wonder about the origins of the universe? Why and how it all began? That's very deep, Claire. Got a star right here. But um, in Joburg, you know, not much opportunity to look out to the night sky, but on the banks of the Orange River, you cannot help but look up there and think, where did it all begin? Well, a few weeks ago, pictures taken by the latest NASA telescope launched into space were released, taking us another step closer to answering that most profound question. They say that there are more stars in the universe than there are grains of sand on all the beaches on planet Earth. It's enough to make you feel infinitesimally small and wonder about our place in the universe. Are we alone? How did it all begin? These are the deepest of questions. Throughout history, humans have looked up to the stars for the answers, first with our eyes and then with telescopes. For over 400 years, they have provided views of distant galaxies with ever-increasing detail. It's an exciting time for astronomy as breathtaking advances in technology are allowing us to see deeper into space than ever before. One example can be found in Sutherland in the Northern Cape, the best place to view the stars in South Africa. This is the massive mirror of the South African Large Telescope. It's only when you get this close to it that you understand the scale of the most powerful optical telescope in the Southern Hemisphere. Dr. Moses Mokhotsi is a resident astronomer at SALT. When technology came along to build telescopes, such as what Galileo Galilei did, it opened up a whole new world because now we could see these little tiny dots in the sky as more than just that. For example, when you look at something like Jupiter, it goes from just being a bright light in the night sky to being a planet with moons, which is very, very exciting to begin with. So that technology has progressed and progressed, which is so exciting. And now we're building massive telescopes on the Earth and also big telescopes that we're sending up into space and observing all sorts of different kinds of light with these telescopes. What is um, some of the work that is done here at SALT? So a lot of, I guess, the, the astronomy work that we do is we observe all sorts of different kinds of objects in the sky, from stars to galaxies to asteroids. Southern African National Telescope has like, all this capability to do all sorts of different kinds of interesting science looking at these kinds of objects. The 11 by 9 meter mirror of salt is so big because it has to see through the Earth's atmosphere. When you're in the ground, we have the atmosphere in the way. Atmosphere is great, it allows us to breathe, we don't die of skin cancer, a lot of very useful things the atmosphere does, right? But the problem is, it can also affect the images that we see. So it's so much better than when you can have a telescope that is outside of the atmosphere, because then it means a telescope that is smaller than ours can just see so much more in terms of see things in better detail and see more distant things. Last Christmas saw the launch of the most complex ever, the $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope. Decollage liftoff from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself, James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. NASA's Dr. Pogonia Villa is a systems engineer on Webb. Webb is the largest and most complex observatory that we have launched to space up to now. I am in charge of two of the instruments uh, on Webb. One of them, the guidance sensor that keeps the observatory pointing and very stable so all the other instruments can do the science. The launch was perfect. We say it was the best Christmas present uh, we could have had. I think any launch is a special event, but I think we all thought it's our child. Uh, we are letting it go. I was lucky to be in French Guiana at the launch site. So it was super wonderful to be there, a wonderful experience. What were the web's objectives? This telescope has taken many years to come to fruition, almost 25 years since the first concept was designed. The request was to have a telescope that could look back in time to the first galaxies and stars that form in the universe to see how they change and evolve. Also to keep looking for formation of the stars and planets around them. And that's important because it's helping us to search for this answer if we are alone, right? How many other planets will have the possibility of lives? Webb is the successor to the iconic Hubble Space Telescope. For over three decades, it has revealed some of the most spectacular images of the universe. Much like our eyes, Hubble sees primarily visible light, but this has its limitations. To study the early universe, Webb has been designed to see infrared light. This is because since the Big Bang, the universe has been expanding, which means that everything is moving further away from us. 
This causes light from distant objects to get stretched from the optical to the infrared, which is invisible to Hubble, but not to Webb. Dr. Rosalind Skelton is an astronomer from the South African Astronomical Observatory. Looking with James Webb, particularly, we can look back to those early phases of the universe uh, when you know, galaxies were just a few hundred million years old that just started forming. And that light has then traveled towards us for billions of years since then. When we're looking at these distant galaxies and stars, we're seeing that object as it was when the light was emitted, even if that light was emitted millions or billions of years ago. Wow, so we could be looking at things that are no longer there. Definitely. Unlike Hubble, which orbits the Earth, Webb orbits the Sun 1.5 million kilometers away from our planet. The Earth helps to block out heat from the Sun as the telescope needs to be kept at minus 230 degrees centigrade to operate properly. That's why Webb has been fitted with a sun shield the size of a tennis court to act as a giant beach umbrella. We can think about the infrared as heat. Uh, everything emits heat. So we are trying to get the heat, the signal of these very faint objects we are looking at. We need to cool everything else down. The centerpiece of Webb is the 6.5 meter gold-plated mirror. Gold improves the mirror's reflection of infrared light. We cannot launch a big mirror, it doesn't fit inside the rocket. So it's made of 18 smaller mirrors that we can fold down and then open when we are in the space. Once unfolded, engineers on the ground had to precisely align the mirrors remotely. To do this, Webb focused on a star. At first, it produced 18 separate images. For the next two months, the mirrors were painstakingly adjusted until they formed one single mirror and one perfectly focused star. Finally, in July, the first breathtaking images from Webb were released to the world. Take me through some of these images. What am I looking at here? Because I'm just seeing a pretty picture. I'm also seeing a pretty picture, but the pretty picture is incredible in that you have these galaxies over here, and they're so massive that they're causing the light from galaxies behind them to be bent around. And when that light is bent around, it causes something that's called lensing. And lensing results in these streaks that we see here on the, on the sides. This is light from galaxies that are very much more distant than these ones, but it's being bent because of how much mass there is there. When I'm looking at this, could you maybe give me an example of the scope or the scale of what I'm seeing in the sky? This is a tiny part of the sky. It's probably like a grain of like rice or something like that. Tiny, tiny, tiny part of the sky. Wow, okay. That, that's, that's the power of a telescope like this. You're blowing my mind. Okay, let's look at something else then. This is another pretty picture I saw and I did not know what I was looking at. So this is what we call a nebula. That's a star forming region. So when you look at this region over here, there are young stars that are being born in those clouds. Optical light, it's difficult for it to get through things like dust. So when we have areas like this that have a lot of matter and a lot of like dust in the way, when you're looking at an optical, sometimes it can be difficult to see through it. With James Webb, because you can look at the infrared, you can see deeper into it than you could with optical. So we're seeing level of detail and more objects in here than we could in the optical. What? You see, I needed your cool. voice when I was looking at the pictures the first time. That's it's... incredible. There is a connection between Webb and the observatory here in Sutherland. One of the first images of James Webb was of this exoplanet atmosphere. That exoplanet was discovered in Sutherland using one of our small telescopes called WASP South. That's the telescope that found planet WASP 96b. Discovered in Sutherland in 2013, WASP 96b is a gas giant like Jupiter. It orbits a star over a thousand light years away from Earth. Almost a decade after its discovery, Webb was able to analyze its atmosphere. We were able to now observe these other exoplanets, and sometimes we're able to detect water in the atmospheres. It gets closer and closer to being able to actually find life in other planets, which is super exciting. We have not seen the universe in this wavelength with the sensitivity that Webb has ever. So when we say it's going to rewrite the history books in astronomy, that is totally true. From stellar nurseries from which new stars are born, to ethereal photos capturing their death, to distant galaxies colliding, these tantalizing first images from Webb are just a taste of things to come. With a lifespan of at least 10 years, we can look forward to many more as we continue to explore the wonders of our universe. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.